Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today I'm going to explain what are haplogroups, what are haplotypes and first of all hapla means one. So if we for example take a look at this karyotype, human karyotype, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes and all these chromosomes here we call autosomes and these chromosomes we call sex chromosomes, which is X chromosome and Y chromosome. In each pair of chromosomes, we got one chromosome from one parent from, say, father side, another from the mother side, from father side, mother side. During meiosis or during gamete formation, male produce sperm, female produce egg cells. These autosomal chromosomes exchange pieces, exchange arms so we call this crossing over and you getting chromosome which is going to be recombinant chromosome of say chromosome number one from one parent also recombinant chromosome number one from other parent so all your chromosomes is not just going to be some sets which you got from your father's side and mother's side but all of them are going to be different from your parents because they would undergo recombination. So such recombination is going to happen with your father chromosomes and such recombination for each chromosome is going to happen with your mother chromosomes. Usually in your textbooks you can see pictures like this where we see two sister chromatids, two homologous chromosomes and only two non-homologous sister chromatids exchange genetic material and we have two chromosomes which are non-recombinant and two which are recombinant. But this is oversimplification, this is actually what happens. All four chromatids participate in recombination. And the same is true for any other autosomal chromosomes. But as for the Y chromosome, the story is different. If you male, that means that you have X chromosome and Y chromosome and Y chromosome you got from your father's side. Females has two X chromosomes, one they got from mother's side, another from the father's side. Two X chromosomes, of course, just like any other pair of autosomal chromosomes, would undergo crossing over and would form a recombinant X chromosome when they would form gamete. So female gamete would be X and X. But males through the uh, gametogenesis is not going to produce recombinant Y chromosome or X chromosome because as you see X and Y chromosomes are very different and though they would pair during meiosis they're not going to undergo crossing over. So Y chromosome always going to be passed intact. So as you see, Y chromosome is passed from father to son and it's not going to be recombinant chromosome, the only non-recombinant chromosome. So along the generations, any mutation that is going to happen to Y chromosome would accumulate. But they are not going to be accumulated through say one or two or three generations, they would accumulate through hundreds or thousands of years. And our picture is not going to look like this upside down pyramid, actually it's going to look like normal pyramid when this person is going to have multiple sons and his sons would have multiple sons and so on. And through say hundreds and thousands of years, this person may have hundreds of thousands or millions of direct descendants, which would carry the same Y chromosome. So we say that all people who carry the same Y chromosome with the same mutations would be related. Usually people would be related if they live in the same area. But sometimes people who live in different areas still can be related because people migrate if it is peaceful movement of uh, human masses or may conquer new living uh, space then in this case, usually we can find a mixture of haplogroups, male Y chromosome haplogroups of the winners and female mitochondrial haplogroups of the population who lost the war. And now for those who wondered 
what this picture here is for. Imagine that this tick is a Y chromosome. So it would be passed intact from father to son, from father to son. And this person in its own turn, when would be father, is going to pass to his son and then again to his son. So through generations and it's going to be intact. All the rest autosomal chromosomes are going to undergo recombination. And by the way, here we see R1A haplogroup. And according to this map, we see that, for example, Indians and Europeans, especially East Europeans, are related. But, for example, Indians and Chinese or, say, East Europeans and Chinese are not related. So we say that this is Indo-Europeans. But you may also ask why, for example, North Indians and Russians belong to the same Aryan group, but they look different. How come? Actually, this major haplogroup R1A breaks down to smaller haplogroups, which are subhaplogroups. An analogy would be like main branch forks into smaller branches. And these subhaplogroups would represent different regions and we add different letters and numbers to specify those subhaplogroups. Now let's talk about another haplogroup which is based on the mitochondria. So here is a human cell and this is what we call mitochondria which produce energy for our cells. Actually, we have two genomes. One is nuclear genome, which we can find here, and mitochondria has its own genome, which are represented by single circular chromosome. Billions of years ago, mitochondria was just bacteria, which eukaryotic organism acquired and used for producing energy for itself. Some of the genes moved to the nucleus and now mitochondria has only 37 genes. How do we inherit this genome, mitochondrial genome? We inherit along with mitochondria. And imagine that this is sperm. So this is sperm. Yes, this is this small, maybe even smaller because it is 10 million times smaller than egg cell. 10 million times smaller by volume. So whenever you see pictures in textbooks which show large sperm like this, it's not true. It's drawn out of scale. And sperm actually is very small in comparison with egg cell. So those it also has mitochondria because it needs to move to reach egg cell, penetrate egg cell. So he's going to be a tail. But actually, number of mitochondria here is so small that when it penetrates egg cell, it's going to be outnumbered by the mitochondria which we can find in the egg cell. And through the uh, division of the zygote, it's going to be completely lost. So we humans, all humans inherit mitochondria only from mother side, which produce egg cells and not from the father side. And those, the circular chromosome present in each mitochondria in multiple copies through the division of mitochondria, they do not undergo any crossing over. So they also would be inherited through generations intact. And mitochondrial inheritance has its own peculiarities. It's not going to be inherited just like Y chromosome because Y chromosome would be inherited from father to son, but Mitochondria would be inherited from mother to all her progeny, male and female. But only her female progeny, which produce egg cells, can pass to all her progeny. A male progeny may inherit mitochondria from the mother side, but cannot pass this mitochondria to its progeny. Only female progeny may pass it down to their progeny. And because mitochondria also can accumulate some mutations through generations, it's going to be passed through generations. Of course, those uh, mutations which would be deleterious for organism is not going to be passed. Only those which doesn't affect our fitness. So when we analyze Y chromosome and mitochondria, we can say about your ancestry, 
where it came from from your father's side and from your mother's side but what about autosomal dna take a look here is also interesting example imagine that your grandfather is russian your grandmother is indian your grandfather on your mother's side is kenyan and your grandmother is german now if we analyze your y chromosome and mitochondria we can say that you would be half russian and half german but probably if you take a look at the mirror you are going to look like this and definitely not half russian and half german because actually you are 25 percent russian 25 percent indian 25 percent kenyan and 25 percent german so now your question how comes that if we analyze haplogroups of the y chromosome and of the mitochondria such companies like 23 and me can actually give much more precise answer than what have been demonstrated on this example now let's return to autosomal chromosomes one more time if you think that chromosomal crossing over happens in random places not leaving us any variants to analyze such chromosomes it's actually not so such crossing over happens in certain places which we call hot spots and between them we have fragments which i show here with blue color which is not broken down and we can analyze them those it's going to be small pieces but still we can analyze them and scientists can build your genetic profile using these small fragments just like for example pieces of puzzle take a look at this mosaic art and imagine that each piece here is represent small fragment of the dna if you would be given just a pile of such pieces probably after certain amount of time after certain uh, amount of hours you would be able to assemble them into this piece of art but with an eye of computers now we can do it much faster from now on i'm going to use just analogy so imagine that uh, different pieces here which represent different colors come from your diverse background for example this brown comes from your african ancestry this white from your european ancestry this yellow from your asian ancestry but nevertheless computers can analyze the picture and those you have such diverse background they can still say that you are mostly european those you have few percent of african uh, genes and also asian these fragments of the dna would contain genes and these genes would be those genes which would be close to each other and of course they also would contain and accumulate mutations which would be unique for each population every population we say have certain unique profile of such mutations which we collectively call haplotype which consists of such pieces of the dna of the autosomal chromosomes when such companies as 23 and me prepare your genetic profile and your ancestral report it is based on the y chromosome haplogroup on the mitochondrial haplogroup and also on the autosomal haplotype which is set of markers and each marker represent one mutation now you know the difference between y chromosome based haplogroups mitochondrial based haplogroups and based on the autosomal chromosomes profiles which we call haplotypes and this is all for today subscribe and see you in the next video goodbye